In this video, we access all of our network devices and folders in a virtual machine by making one simple change to VirtualBox default settings. Hello everyone and welcome to TechFix Flicks. Without changing the default settings in VirtualBox, our networking options are very much limited, and whilst we can use the Shared Folders option to transfer files to and from the host, we want to be able to access every device and drive on our network, and it's very straightforward. We need to ensure that VirtualBox bridged networking is enabled during the initial installation, and you can see this in our Installing VirtualBox tutorial. We have been cautious in the past with this, as it's previously prevented VirtualBox installation, but provided that it doesn't compromise the setup, it's an extremely valuable feature. With VirtualBox installed and our virtual machine configured, we can now right click our virtual machine and select Settings. We move from General Settings to Network, and it's the default under Attached To which restricts our access to the wider network. From the drop down menu, we have the option to select the bridged adapter, and once confirmed, we rerun our virtual machine and log in. If this virtual machine has previously been run and therefore connected to a network, it will now recognise this configuration as a new network. When we run Windows Explorer and navigate to our network, we note that our BT Home Hub router is now visible as a network resource, where it was previously unseen. This is our first indication of wider network access. However, we also have a laptop connected to the same network, which doesn't appear in the list. We therefore click in the address bar, where we type two forward slashes, followed by the exact name of the device as it appears in the network dialog, in our case, Acer Laptop. If you need to rename a network device, we have a separate tutorial on this topic, linked in the written description accompanying this video. Where the username is different on the remote machine, we are required to enter that username and the associated password. Now the remote machine is available to our VM, and accessible in accordance with the permissions assigned on that machine. It may be the case that the machine is immediately visually represented, which means we could simply click its icon rather than typing the full network path. If we wish, we can map this as a network drive, and we cover this topic in our automatic mapping tutorial. As well as working in Windows clients, this technique also makes our full network resources available to the virtual Macs we created in our Mojave and High Sierra tutorials. Whilst we can now connect to our network PCs, we note that we can see our NAS as a media device only, but we cannot see the network shares in our File Explorer window. Even typing the network paths, which we know to be correct, will not allow us to access our files, even after correct entry of username and password. Accessing these drives is hugely important to us, and it transpires that the issue lies with SMB support. SMB 1.0 was depreciated in 2013, with SMB 3.0 introduced around the same time. Our Synology disk station uses 1.0 by default, and misalignment with Windows prevents access to our network shares. We address this by one of two means. We can either modify Windows to maintain SMB 1.0 support, retaining the security risks associated with the depreciated protocol, or we can modify our NAS to use SMB 3.0. The decision may be influenced by the configuration of other devices connecting to our NAS, and we therefore cover both methods, starting with the less preferable option to adapt Windows only. From our Windows desktop, we click our Start menu, typing Turn Windows Features on or off. The Windows Features dialog appears, and we scroll down, expanding SMB 1.0 CIFS file sharing support. We tick SMB 1.0 CIFS client, then OK, and a brief installation phase follows. As a restart is required, we click to restart now. The machine prepares and configures the update. We are required to log in, unless we've followed the steps in our NetPL Wiz tutorial for automatic login. We are returned to our desktop and run File Explorer. As before, we note that our drives are not immediately available. We therefore click in the address bar, entering two forward slashes disk station. We are required to enter our username and password, which we do. At this point, all of our network folders are accessible. Whilst that fix allows us to access our folders, a better option is to raise the SMB level of the NAS, which also removes dependence upon SMB 1.0 and the vulnerabilities which accompany it. We therefore log into our disk station, and from our home screen we advance to the control panel, selecting File Services and clicking the Advanced Services button. We click the drop down for Maximum SMB Protocol, selecting SMB3. With that option confirmed, we also need to specify the Minimum SMB Protocol, 
here we opt for SMB2 with large MTU. With that selection confirmed, we scroll down and click apply. We then restart to apply the settings. Because we've changed the demands required by the NAS, we now need to mirror those settings in Windows. We're in familiar territory here, as we again type turn Windows features on or off, and hit enter, opening the Windows Features dialog in which we scroll down, again with a view to changing values for SMB 1.0 support. On this occasion, we are looking to withdraw SMB 1.0, so we deselect SMB 1.0 CIFS sharing support. We also need to make sure that SMB Direct is selected where it's offered. Once features are installed, a restart is required. Following login, upon return to our desktop, our network folders are now available. Having changed the requirements for the NAS, we will now need to make the same amendment on each of our machines which had previously used SMB 1.0. To simplify mapping and naming multiple drives, you may want to check out our forthcoming tutorial which maps and names network shares automatically via script. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the TechFix Flix YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official TechFix Flix Twitter account. Until your next TechFix, goodbye.